Hello, my name is Gil Zilka. Welcome to my channel. This is my series entitled Essential Classical Music, where we look at the best recordings of the major classical music works. Uh, this video is uh, taken out of my larger video covering the major symphonies. Uh, if you enjoy this, I hope you will go over and, and look at that larger one. Uh, just know that you don't have to watch it all in one big gulp. Uh, it is divided into chapters. It's real easy to just click uh, through and choose whichever symphony that you're curious about. So I hope you enjoy it. Now let's go to Bruckner's final symphony, the ninth. Uh, the ninth is uh, a, a symphony that Bruckner actually did not complete. It ends with the third movement, Adagio. But I tell you, in my opinion, that's enough. <laughs> it's, it's just a masterpiece, and it's, it's already so ever, overwhelming, I, I don't know how he could top it. I, I, now, I know there are some like fragments that he left, and there have been some attempted completions. Uh, they've never been... Uh, convincing to me, uh, but certainly you can you can uh, check those out. Uh, but for the traditional three movement version, um, this is another one of those kind of slam dunk recommendations because it comes in uh, a digital sound quality. This is Giolini and the Vienna Philharmonic from 1988, uh, and this is just one of the greatest Bruckner recordings uh, ever made. Um, this fit Giolini like a glove, this, this symphony, uh, with his, his, his spiritual way of, of, of conducting in, in a very you know, patient and allowing things to build. And, and this is just, it's just overwhelming, awe-inspiring, this recording. It really is. Um, the, and the playing is beautiful and the sound quality is beautiful. I really have nothing else to say. They'd get this. <laughs> um, however, there are also some other great uh, versions of this this great symphony and uh, one of them is Gunter Wand who again I have two recordings to recommend uh, this again is Berlin Philharmonic this is from 19, 1998 and then this one again is from the Lübeck Cathedral with the North German Radio Symphony Orchestra this came from 1988 and the virtues are similar to what you got with the eighth this one has the beautiful playing of, of the Berlin Philharmonic uh, Vaughn's interpretation, his his patience, his uh, uh, knowledge of, of just where to go, it's just a, a wonderful interpretation and it really makes sense of the symphony in, in a unique way. And then this one it has that, that hushed intensity, that atmosphere that uh, I, you know, must have been from that live recording they had in, in the Lubeck Cathedral. Uh, there is, I think, a video of this floating around. I've seen it off and on around on YouTube. Um, very dramatic, very powerful. Both of these are, are wonderful. Uh, we also have, again, Carrie-Anne, and again, it's his mid-70s Berlin Philharmonic recording that I think is the best. Um, he, he did have one from, I think it was like 1966 with Berlin on Deutsche Grammophon that uh, is very famous uh, for its power and intensity. Um, some people prefer that one. I think that this one, uh, it was, it's even a stronger, more defined performance. Uh, and, it, you know, what else do you want in this symphony? It's, it's powerful. It's, it's dramatic. Um, you get the, the full carry-in with this one. Uh, however, we also have another Berlin Philharmonic recording, and this time from the 90s. This is Daniel Barenboim. Uh, Barenboim actually recorded three separate Bruckner cycles with three different orchestras. Uh, one in the, I think it was mainly in the 70s or maybe all in the 70s, that's with the Chicago Symphony. Then he had this one the Berlin, with the Berlin Philharmonic, uh, which is in digital. And I think that's around around this time period, 1990, maybe late 80s, early 90s, I think. And then a more recent one with the Staatskapelle. Uh, it's a Berlin Staatskapelle. I can't, believe, I, I can't remember if it's the Dresden or Berlin. I think it's the Berlin Staatskapelle. Anyways, I think it's this middle cycle, the Berlin cycle, that is his strongest. It's the best combination of orchestra and conductor being on the top of their game. And this is just a, a, a really good Bruckner ninth. It just sounds very natural and inevitable. Uh, the, the power of the, of the, uh, of the interpretation uh, just builds slowly, it builds naturally. 
and, and it's got this sound about it that I, I don't know how to define it. Uh, it's, it's like this rounded Bruckner sound that just sounds right for Bruckner. So this is an excellent Bruckner night. Um, also, we have a more recent one. This is from 2018. This is Manfred Honig with the Pittsburgh Symphony. The sound quality on this one is incredible. You have a dynamic range, which is just you know amazing. Uh, so that's definitely a plus in this favor. Uh, it's this one has uh, you know so it's got the the wonderful climax is very incisive uh, everything is immaculately phrased uh, and then you know because of the dynamic range especially you have just these hushed pian uh, pianos so this is definitely if you're looking for a recent recording uh, and looking for something from Manfred Honig who is sort of like the the hot thing today among conductors uh, this is definitely uh, definitely worth seeking out a couple of vintage recordings this one is a conductor we have not discussed yet. This is Hans Knappertsbusch. Uh, he was uh, mainly a Wagner specialist, or mainly known as a Wagner specialist, but that, of course, lends itself very well to Bruckner. This is a live recording, January 30th, 1950. I mentioned the exact date because he did a studio recording two days earlier also with the Berlin Philharmonic. Uh, that one obviously has an appeal for, for being a, a better sound quality. This one's a little bit noisy, but I think this one shows him at his most inspired. And it is just so, it, it's just dramatic and um, uh, uh, emotional. He, he has this way of thrusting back and forth, uh, which, you know, <laughs> is, um, you, you don't really see that a lot these days. Uh, so this is, if, if you're interested in exploring the Berkner Ninth more, th this is really worth seeking out. And then finally, we have yet again, Fortfinger, and yet again, a wartime recording, this time with the Berlin Philharmonic. It was right about the same time as that uh, eighth with the Vienna uh, from 1944. And again, you know, we can only speculate that maybe towards the end of the war, especially that there were, you know, heavy emotions that were playing into it. But it's just a, a super intense recording, uh, almost apocalyptic, uh, this version of the ninth. Um, the sound quality is not quite as good as the eighth, but it's pretty good. Um, and I, I do want to mention that this ninth, as well as the eighth, are also both in this box set as well. So I, I can't say enough. If you're interested in Fort Wenger, uh, th this is a, a, a good investment to make. Uh, this issue is from Praga Digitals, which is something that has only recently uh, come up. And um, they're supposed to have better sound quality. Um, they sound good to me. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, when you're talking about something that was recorded in the 1940s, I mean, how much improvement can you get? But, you know, yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's some for some people it's worth it. Um, on that topic, I will mention that the the eighth there is an issue by I, th I think it's called Musica Concepts that I, I will say that does sound like an improvement on the other transfers I've heard. Anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, I hope you'll also take time to click the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I want to wish you all a great day and happy listening.